All right, so I haven't done a video in a while, so I thought I'd do a quick little video on one of the ventilators we use a lot here in Saskatoon, which is the Hamilton G5. This is a vent you won't see in New Brunswick. Um, I'm just going to show you some of the main differences between some of the vents you see in New Brunswick, such as the Servo I and Avita XL and the G5. Um, some of the big differences. Um, one of the main things is end tidal CO2 is built right into the vent. So it hooks in down here. You put it in, we don't hook it up until basically we're ready to hook it up to the patient. So we grab the end tidal cuvette, hook it up there, and we do a quick calibration up there right before we start it. Um, another main thing is the flow sensor is actually at the end of the patient circuit. So this little blue piece right there. And it hooks yeah, right here into the vent, so the flow sensor. Um, so because the flow sensor is at the end of the patient circuit, um, when doing the pre-use check, the ventilator does not calculate tubing compliance. So yeah, that's a little bit different from the servo eye where the flow sensor is actually inside the vent. Um, so starting it up, same as most vents, the power button is on the back. So come around here, so you just lift that up and it's the little button right there. So one of the first things we do when we hook a patient up to this is we measure them. We always have a little measuring tape right here. Um, the G5 will automatically calculate ideal body weight and shows you what the mils per kg per ideal body weight is. So if we go into controls, we have it set at 500 mils. It'll show down here we're at 6.9 mils per kg per ideal body weight. Um, if we go back to the main screen, so you have to say if it's male or female, and then we measure their, we put their height in, and it tells you the exact ideal body weight in kg, and yeah, we measure it in centimeters here, which is a pretty neat thing. Makes us so that you don't have to do the calculations yourself. Um, and we go into the systems menu at the bottom. I guess the first little thing is all the information about it, like the operating hours. Um, yeah, that's the main thing in there. Test and calibration is basically the pre-use check. It's I'm not going to go through it. It's very easy on this. Um, the CO2 one we do once we're ready to hook it up to the patient. So that's not part of the pre-use check. Um, I'm going to extras. Um, another thing that this vent has is you can run a nebulizer through the circuit. Um, so if we go up here, you can pick how long it runs for, if it's on inspiration, expiration, or both. For the most part, we just do inspiration to try to get the most of the aerosol actually to the patient. And then the day-night mode, basically you can switch from day-night, it's a little bit less bright, and you can adjust the alarm volume, but we never touch that here. Um, so I guess some of the modes, I'm going to go up to the top. So PCMV is basically pressure control. CMV is volume control. Uh, APV CMV is basically PRVC. Um, spontaneous is pressure support. APRV is the same as New Brunswick. Airway pressure release ventilation. NIV is basically your BiPAP or CPAP, um, and then there's all your SIMVs, so APV, SIMV, pressure control, SIMV, yeah. Um, another one they have on this is ASV, which is kind of like a smart um, smart pressure support. I'm not really going to explain it on this. I believe it's specific to the G5, or basically this company, all their ventilators. I might make a video later on it. Um, so I guess next, well, we just have it hooked up to a test lung down here, so I'm going to just start it. I'm going to turn down the volume a bit, so I'll start buttons right here, so I'm going to give it a second. So normally our end tidal waveform would be at the top. I'm just going to switch it to our pressure. Yep. All right. So, the main screen on the left here is basically our normal, our main monitoring values. So, our total respiratory rate, exhaled tidal volume, 
exhaled minute volume, you have peak pressures, and this is where your end tidal CO2, it's turned off right now because the cuvette's not, it's not in the patient circuit. Um, I think down here, they also there's a whole bunch of things you can scroll through as well. Um, I usually just have that off, and it's pretty much everything. You can hit the monitoring button right here, and it'll bring it all up. Um, what else is on here? So I guess your waveforms are up here. Normally we have our end title and flow waveform. Um, they are adjustable. You can go in and change them. I'm just going to have it on pressure and flow for this. So I guess another thing we have that down here is what they call the dynamic lung on this. Uh, it basically has your static compliance and resistance. It does it on a breath by breath basis. It's supposed to calculate it based on like a couple really, really fast breath holds each breath. Um, I more use it to trend. If I want to get actual like my pulmonary mechanics, I'll go into tools and do an inspiratory hold. Um, when you do do it, it'll freeze the waveform up there so you can actually scroll through it. Yeah. Um, another neat little thing is it's got kind of a visual interpretation of compliance. So these little lungs, the more blocky they are, the lower the compliance. So if it's a complete square, it's very, very low compliance. These ones are pretty blocky, so static compliance of 24 is a little bit low. If the compliance is quite high, the lungs are very round. So it's just a quick little visual cue of what your compliance is like. Um, down here, sorry, vent status. It gives us a couple other little numbers. Um, it calculates your rapid shallow breathing index for you when you're doing SVTs. Um, your per percent spontaneous, so what percent of breasts the patient is actually triggering themselves, which is another useful little thing. Yeah. And over here is all your set values, which you can easily adjust. It's a touch screen, or there's a little knob down here that you can scroll through everything. I'm just going to put that back up. Let's go like that. Okay. So, other things you can do down here. You can put your waveforms down here. So. Basically the same things up top. We usually don't do that. But you can trend things. So there's a whole bunch of things you can trend in this. Um, so you can trend like peak pressures, compliance, resistance, P plateau, any of your set values. Um, one other thing you can do, you can do a loop. So your volume pressure curve, it does it on a breath by breath basis. Which can be useful sometimes if you want to check like over distension or yeah I'm gonna just stick that back to dynamic lung uh, yeah so another cool thing that this vent has is the PV tool so I'm gonna to go into that so we use this for two purposes uh, to determine optimal peep and you can also do lung volume recruitment with it so it uses a volume pressure curve which shows your inflation and deflation limbs on a compliance curve. Um, so the things you set is what peep you want to start at, what peep you want to end at, the top peep you want to go to during this maneuver, how fast it's going to rise, so three centimeters of water pressure per second, and then if you want to pause the top, like if you want to do a recruitment. Um, so if you want to do a recruitment, we'll say 30 of peep. So they want to hold 30 of peep for 30 seconds. So we would go, so 22 seconds. So we'll keep increasing the pause at the end, 27. So 30 seconds. So we started at a peep of five, go up to 30, and it'll last about 30 seconds. And then once the maneuver is done, it'll put the peep automatically back to five. So that's an easy way to do lung volume recruitment. Um, when you're determining optimal peep, so we'll do the same type thing. So this is a test lung, so it might not be the best compliance curve. But so we'll set it. We started a peep at five. We go up to 35. 
Um, I'm still going to make it so that it's about 30 seconds. Um, it'll basically show you if there's any recruitable lung at the end. If you have a little pause at the top and we'll get it to end back at 5. So I'm going to hit start. So we pretty much only do this on patients who aren't spontaneously breathing. Um, most of the time they'll be quite sedated or paralyzed. Um, you don't want any leaks in your circuit. So it's going to plot the compliance curve right here. So it's got your volume pressure curve. And you can see it going up. So it's going up to a peep of 35. So we just hit it and it's going to hold it for a couple seconds and then come back down. I can already tell right now it's not a great compliance curve. But, okay, so it's starting to come back down. So we'll wait for it to finish. Okay. So what we do here to determine optimal PEEP is you want to, right here you can do your two cursors, you want to set it so that, eh, it's really hard to see on this curve, but basically where your inflation limb is and where your X, well, the other one's not so bad. The other one's right about here. The other one, it's basically where your lung starts to open up on the bottom. It's kind of hard to see with this. So once you find those two points, you basically look for, oops, that's just because we did a breath hold for 30 seconds. It'll come back up. So um, you have your two points, your inflation and deflation limb. And you find between those two, wherever the biggest difference, and you can scroll through. So wherever the biggest difference is between the top and bottom is basically your optimal peak. Uh, it's a cool little thing that this vent has. Yeah. It's kind of, it's not ideal to show you with the test lung, but, so that's how we do it with this. Um, other than that, yeah, that's basically the main differences between this and some of the vents you'll see in New Brunswick. The circuit's pretty much all set up the same. Um, yeah, humidifier's the same. And the only thing, flow sensor at the end, we put our end title on the patient side of that, so on this side and that's pretty much it. Hope you enjoyed the video.